Hello people, how's it going? So, this is kind of rare for me because I always take pictures, but tonight I'm going to try taking some video of the process of me making an image. So, this is also going to kind of be a review of like the, uh, the VSD100 that OPT Corp sent me and also the Triad Ultra Filter. Uh, my target for tonight, I'm thinking, is going to be either Seder or the Elephant Trunk Nebula. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably take pictures of both and see which one I decide I like, but that is the plan for tonight. We've got, I don't know if you can see it, a basically full moon, so it's going to be an interesting test of the triad filter, see how it deals with the full moon. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get this camera set up for a nice little time lapse so you can see me setting up. Hello people, so I'm out here at the scope right now, ooh, after I've gotten everything set up and running, and right now I'm imaging the, uh, the butterfly nebula and the crescent nebula together. Since I have a big enough field of view to cover both, it makes sense to go for two birds and one stone. So let me show you guys the screen. I'll be uh, bringing you guys into Team Viewer, so you don't have to deal with this ugly, like fisheye view of the screen. Yeah, let's let's get this into Team Viewer so I can show you guys more of what's going on here. Hello, people. So right now I'm remote connecting into my computer outside, which is a very fantastic way of imaging because I hate sitting outside with my telescope for all night getting bit by the mosquitoes. But anyways, here's the uh, field of view of what I'm looking at and I just got a nice surprise actually. Got a little bit of a meteor going right past the, uh, the Crescent Nebula. Which is incredibly lucky by the way that this like never happens. So, very interesting night already. Alrighty, while this time lapse rolls, I thought I would explain to you guys why the images coming off the back of the camera were black and white instead of color, even though I'm using a color camera. So the thing with all color cameras is they have a thing in front of them called a CFA or a color filter array. Typically it's an arrangement of pixels in red, green, green, blue stacked next to each other. And the problem is the camera is dumb and it doesn't know which filter is which. So in software, you have to tell it which one is which, and my capture software does not assign the colors during capture. So it looks black and white, so it's just reading what each individual pixel sees, and I tell it what color to be later on. So I hope that makes sense. Alrighty people, so the night is over. Tis daytime again. I just looked through the laptop and it looks like we got a whole night uh, of imaging and we got the meridian flip done while I was asleep. So everything appeared to go as normal. Now it's just a matter of bringing the beast inside and processing all the data. And there's a lot of it and this camera has a huge sensor so it's going to take a while. But all the capture is done for tonight and I just got to get this thing packed up and sent back to OPT. I'm gonna miss the fella. Very nice astrograph. So, <clears throat> this scope here is called the VSD100. It's a Vixen astrograph. It goes for like six grand, and it's a very nice astrograph. So, the main selling point of this thing is that it has an imaging circle that's like 50 millimeters, no, it's 75 millimeters in diameter. So you can stack like two full frame chips on top of each other and fit them inside the image circle of the scope, which is absolutely ridiculous. So that's, <laughs> that's the main point. The other selling point is this thing is that, I don't know if you can see it, 
probably can't. It's at f3.8, which is dummy fast. So this thing is kind of a killer for mosaics. It's got the big field of view. It's very fast. It's a combination you can't really beat. Uh, this thing does have, it doesn't have a normal style focuser, it has a helical focuser, so if I spin this ring, the camera will move in and out. Um, this is probably the only kind of quirky part about this telescope, because this thing is hard to automate. Uh, there are some solutions that people sell that are like motors that you can use to automate this, but uh, they seem like very odd solutions, so this scope I think is better if you're not trying to automate and you're like out here like a dark site imaging manually. Like this makes sense kind of. It's an easy smooth setup. It'd be very good if you're using a DSLR on this, but kind of odd. It's smooth and it works well. It's easy to focus with it, but my desire as an engineer is just to smack a motor right there and have it do it while I'm asleep, but can't always get what you want. And of course I have it in a side-by-side -side here with my refractor because I got the spacing wrong on this OAG, but it doesn't matter because this thing, this camera by the way, the QHY367C, it's sensitive enough I don't really need to take long exposures while I'm running the quad narrowband filter on the inside, which is letting me get some nice details while the full moon is out. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this sucker packed up and sent out of here and get this data processed. Hope you guys enjoyed watching a little bit of the process. It's a good time. Even though I was asleep for most of it. Oh no, <laughs> my little, my cable router just got plucked off. Man, it's been there for like a year. That's sad. Alright. Hope you guys enjoyed.